Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Andrea. Uh, I am on Instagram under Alu Knits. That is also my Ravelry username. Um, if you're new to my channel, uh, welcome. And I hope you enjoy uh, watching my videos where I talk about yarn and knitting and wellness as well. Um, and if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back to spend time with me. Um, like I said just now, my name is Andrea. Uh, on Instagram, I put out reels every Friday with wellness tips and ergonomic tips and posture tips and exercises, stretches, all that kind of stuff um, for makers and people who craft with their hands. I am a physical therapist as my background. And so I decided to combine kind of my career and my love of knitting together as one. And here we are. Um, every episode at the end, I share a wellness tip with you. Um, and but first, I'm going to go over uh, what I got in the mail, my FO, my whips, that kind of thing. All the standard things you see in a yarn podcast. Um, so first, let's start with my FO. So I've only got one this week, but it is a pretty big one. <laughs> it's my summer sorrel tee. I'm wearing it right now. So this is a summer sorrel tee pattern by Woolen Pine Designs. And this is knit up in Yarn Loves, um, what is it? Is it the Cinderella base? I can't remember right now, but it's her BFL fingering base. Um, and this is the colorway Chevron Chalet. It was an exclusive for Eat Sleep Knit, which is a yarn shop down in Dallas, Georgia. Dallas, Georgia? Yes, Dallas, Georgia. Um, and this was an exclusive colorway for them, I think in 2020, if I'm correct. Um, but I'm gonna kind of come a little closer so you can see, you can see it's got some, it's like a, this moody dark blue. There's some purples and grays in there as well. Um, I am really with, happy with how this turned out. Um, yeah, I really love it. Um, I went for a size with more positive ease in it, uh, just so, cause I didn't want it to fit too tightly. Plus it is um, at a BFL, blue face luster wool. And um, I have very sensitive skin. Um, so to be quite honest with you, as I'm wearing this right now, I can, I'm very conscious that it's feeling very prickly against my body. Um, yeah, but it is, I did knit it a little like too, it's, it hits me right at my hip. And so I'm planning on maybe wearing this over a dress, um, maybe with a, sh a tank underneath it when it's colder. Um, I've also been told that BFL will soften the more you wear it. So I'm hopeful that that will happen as well. I mean, it's not prickly to the point where I need to tear it off, but um, I'm definitely aware of it. Um, there are some fibers um, where if it pricks at me after some time, I can ignore it and then be fine. I think this will kind of be like that yeah um so yeah i'm really happy with it super happy with it um if you've been following along then you know that i did frog a little bit of the body when it was starting to pool so i frogged back to where it, right before where it started to pool and then what i started doing was i only um i used two skeins of fingering weight for my size and what i started doing was alternating but from like either end of the yarn ball so i had one um one thread pulled from the center of my cake and one thread pulled from the outside. It did get a little like, hairy because it did get a little tangled at times, um, but it worked out. Uh, yeah, and so I'm coming to you today from a new location inside my room. Uh, and the part of that is because it's nighttime right now. Um, and I also wanted to try to give you a different view. Um, ideally, like this corner where I have all my plants in my bedroom, is probably the most aesthetically pleasing part but it is against the window and so during the day it's like heavily backlit because a lot of sun comes in through this window and so it's not like a great place to film in front of because then all the colors will get blown out um or it'd be like super dark so but because it's nighttime i have all the lights on in my room i've got a ring light in front of me so i feel like the lighting looks pretty good if this works out well i might just film at night from now on and just do it like that because i feel like this looks a lot nicer than my blank wall um yeah, let me know what you think. And also, I feel like I look a little less shiny than I do during the daytime. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is my FO. I've been working on it for a while because it kept getting pushed off to the side with test knit. So I'm really, really happy to have it off the needles and to just have it finished. Okay, so in terms of whips, I'll show you the two that have been carrying over with me for the past couple of episodes. So the first one of that is, well, actually, one of them is my Rose Pico tea. I'm not going to show it to you today because I haven't really made much progress on it. Um, so it doesn't feel like it's 
useful to show you. If you want to see what it looks like, you can either go to my Ravelry page or to a past episode. Um, and also, you know, all my information, I link everything. I link all the makers and all the patterns and dyers that I talk about. Uh, my Ravelry page, my Instagram, my Patreon page, my Ko-Fi, my website are also linked below in the description box also. So you can find all that information there, um, especially if I forget to talk about maybe like what kind of yarn it was that I used in a certain whip or anything like that. Any information that I forget to mention will be in the description box below. So um, as you all know, I've been working on a sweater for my husband for <laughs> pretty much the entire year. Um, so I think the last episode I filmed, I'd shown y'all that I had um, cast on the cuff. So this sweater is the Riff sweater from, it's by Jared Flood. And it's a pattern that I think is in collaboration with Brooklyn Tweed. And it is a men's sweater. It is knit from the bottom up. Um, and then you do the sleeves from the cuff up and then seam them in. So this is my first time doing like, I think they're called set in sleeves. Um, I'm not liking the process so far. Uh, I usually like to knit like top down raglans or circular yokes. Um, yeah, so we'll see. This might be my first and my last ever set in sleeves. Um, so this is the cuff. The cuff is in um, Fiber Forest Friends, I think. And the colorway is, what is it? I have a. I have a few of it here. So it is Forest Fiber Arts. It's Targi Worsted, and this is in Lovebirds. So here's a skein of it. I just happen to have that right there. Sorry for the sound. Um, so that's a contrast color, and then this is in Dreaming Color yarn in the classy, classy base, I think. It's their worsted base. And this colorway is Black Pearl. Yeah, Black Pearl. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like several inches in. Yeah, but it's just that because that you're knitting from the cuff up, you're just increasing as you go instead of decreasing. So it feels like it gets longer. I mean, because it does, you're knitting more and more stitches successively instead of decreasing down. Um, so yeah, and I'm doing these on nine inch circulars, which is what I've been doing with sleeves. I really liked it, um, but I've discovered that with, um, I think it's a combination of this worsted yarn with a size seven needle. It's just, um, my hands aren't loving it, so I'm working slowly on it. I'm not pushing myself to like do a ton of it at once or anything like that. Anyway, so yeah, that's the sleeve, this sleeve number one. Um, and as long as I get this done, I'm gonna aim to have this done in November. That is my goal. All right, and so um, last week I had a day where I was doing the sewn bind off for this top. It uses sewn bind off like for everything. And just from holding a tapestry needle like all day long doing sewn bind off on like, you know, three, four, 500 stitches, my hand got like kind of crampy and my thumb started to hurt. And so I had to take a whole day off of knitting. Um, and part of those that was just to make sure that I didn't overdo it and end up in a situation where I couldn't knit for more than a day because I like way overused my hand. And so instead what I did was I wound up yarn for a bunch of projects. And then once my hand felt much better the next day, I just cast on a bunch of things. So I've got one, two, three, um, one, two, three. Yeah, three new projects to show you that I've cast on in the past two weeks. Um, so first, this is the Willa Tea by This Bird Knits. I can't remember her name right now, but she's This Bird Knits on Instagram. Again, everything will be linked in the show notes. So I talked about this last time about how I was gonna cast on this yarn from Craft Me Not Yarn Co. This is in her wool, 90% wool, 10% linen base. And this is the colorway Cafe. So it's this beautiful tan neutral color. I think that's coming through pretty well. So you can see it's a, it's a top down sweater. It's a round yoke. And there's this beautiful lace detail here and I'm almost to the point I've got like I think a few more rows to knit before I separate for the sleeves um, and it's a short sleeve top um, this is fingering weight um, and it's knit on like a size eight so it's like pretty airy so it'll be a very nice kind of summer top hopefully nice and cool especially with the 10% linen content so that is the Willa T I also cast on my daughter's yearly sweater except this year she requested a vest um, 
So this is her vest. I am modifying the pattern uh, in my pocket sweater. Vet, sweater. It is by Rachel Kurihara. Um, if you remember, I test knit this pattern for her two months ago and I made my son a sweater of it, uh, a sweater in it. I'm sorry, it is late and I've lost my ability to talk. And my daughter saw her brother's sweater and she decided she wanted one too, but she wanted one without sleeves. And so she picked out this yarn herself. This is from the Red Pansy and this is in Hibiscus. So it's this beautiful red, coral, orangey, yellowy colorway with specks of magenta throughout. Yeah, so I have, um, fit, I'm down to the body now. I've joined in the body to all the way down. And then for her contrast color, this is Lagoon, also by the Red Pansy. It's this beautiful kind of, I don't know what to call it, minty aqua color. Yeah, so it'll go together. The contrast color will be done for the collar and for the hem and the cuff, well, not the cuffs, the ribbing on the, the sleeve openings. Um, and then she wants a pocket as well, just like her brother. So I cast that on for her and yeah, it's a, you know, it's just all stock in it straight through now. Um, so it's a good mindless knit for when I'm watching the kids. And then the last whip I've been working on is my love note sweater. So this is my love note. I am modif I am knitting it modified. So the love note, which I will pop a picture here, is a also a circular yoke with a lace detail um, sweater. It's DK weight, but knit on size 10 needles. So it's an airier gauge also, like a looser gauge. Um, and the original pattern calls for, I think it's like three quarter length sleeves. And then you can either knit a cropped or full length and it's got that lace detailing. I decided to omit the lace detailing and just knit it straight through instead. Um, and I'm modifying it by just um, knitting the sleeves as long as I can. Like if I can get them to full length, I'll get them to full length just for like ultra coziness levels, right? Um, and I did knit it to full length as well. And this yarn is by Labiana May. This is in her Merino DK base. And this is Totoro and May. And so uh, Totoro and May is in reference to these characters from the Studio Ghibli film, My Neighbor Totoro. Um, if you've never watched it or heard of it, um, it's a Miyazaki film. Um, and it's about these two young girls who befriend this, um, I guess like cat ghost spirit, <laughs> um, whose name is Totoro. Um, and this was like one of my favorite films growing up. And I loved Totoro as a kid, I still do. Um, and so I, when, when Amy was, um, releasing this colorway last year, I just had to have it. And I love it. It's like a beautiful grayish base um, with pink and orangey, slightly rainbow-like speckles throughout. And there's some white going through as well. So Totoro, I'll try to pop a picture of him here. He's like a gigantic cat-like thing, but he's got gray fur and a white belly. Um, so that gray and white is just like the Totoro colors. Yeah, so I finished the body, finished the collar, and now I just I just picked up stitches for my first sleeve here. And the stitch marker is by Gabriella of Hello Gabriella. It batches perfectly. Yeah. So this is a quick knit. Like I cast this on last Monday. Today is Thursday of the following week. And I've been knitting on all my other projects in between as well. I've been kind of rotating through all of them. Um, and yeah, I'm already like, you know, up to, down to the sleeves. So it is a quick knit just because it's, you know, size 10 needles on a DK base. The pattern you can also knit up by holding finger weight and like a mohair together. Uh, I am kind of like allergic to mohair and surrey. So I decided just do DK weight. Um, and part of why I decided to omit the lace was because in the pattern photos I'd seen of people who'd completed it before, the lace can sometimes look odd on certain bodies, I think. And I noticed also that if you knit your pattern in just DK weight yarn, it just makes for like a heavier fabric, you know? And so I think then it makes, it tugs on that lace oddly. Um, so I decided to just omit it and just knit it all the way straight through. Yeah, and I'm really happy with how it looks too. So those are my whips. <laughs> And the reason that I 
had to film this podcast tonight and not like wait till tomorrow is because my Monet yarn for the month of August came today and I am itching, itching, itching to cast it on. Um, but I, you know, I want to show it off to y'all in its skein form. Um, so let me show you. So this is for the month of August. The painting inspiration for this month is Autumn Poplars. A picture over here somewhere. Eden, are you ready? Here it is. Yeah, this is showing up pretty well, I think, on camera. Look how pretty it is. Look at it. All these like dark green speckles and there's some rusty speckles in there as well. It's just so pretty. It's such a beautiful interpretation of the painting. You know, it's a little bit brighter, I think, than the original painting is, but it pair, it, it looks so good. Like all the colors look so good together. If you've been following along with my Monday journey this year, um, you can look at all the photos on Instagram or you can check them out on my Ravelry. Um, or you can look at Kelly's page as well, the Red Pansy. Um, but you can see that there's like there's notes of all the other months that come through as well. So you can see here, this blue over here is like January's colorway a little bit. Um, where's that patch? There was a patch here, it is. This part right here looks a lot, kind of that muted color, looks a lot like May's colorway. And then this kind of tealish, greenish aquamarine color coming through is very similar to July's colorway, which I just finished knitting up. Yeah, it's so, it's so pretty. And what amazes me every month is that some of the months, you know, when I look at the picture of the yarn online after she's released it, or when I look at the painting online, I'm not like wowed by it. I'm not thinking like, oh, I must have that. I'm gonna love that. But then when she's dyed it up and I get it and I see it in my hands, I'm like, this is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I am so glad I decided to do this project this year. Um, if you didn't watch episode one, which is where I talk about my Monet project, episode one, yes, episode one. Um, Kelly's been doing this club all year since the beginning of the year. Every month she dyes up a colorway based off of a Monet painting that is pre-selected. It's a mystery club. And I decided at the beginning of the year to subscribe to the club for the year um, and make a garment for each month to showcase each month as a way to kind of force myself out of my creative box a little bit and to really just let inspiration take hold of me and to really work outside of my zone and my comfort zone and I've really enjoyed it so far and I think I will continue to enjoy it until the end of the year really um it's been it's really given my knitting mojo so much of a boost um I think I've like knit like 15 garments already this year and like that's not just Monet garments like clearly I've only knit seven Monet garments so far but I've knit seven or eight other garments as well and I'm quite amazed at how prolific my knitting has been this year but I've just been so inspired um and Kelly's club has been a huge part of that and her yarn too so yeah look how pretty yeah and so my plans for these is I'm going to knit this up in the Wild Wind pattern by Wool and Pine Designs. Um, picture here. The only thing I'm going to change is probably, I might knit it a little longer. I haven't decided yet like how cropped I'll make it. Um, but I'm not going to do the fringe, um, the tassels at the end. I'm just not a tassel person, you know, that's just not me. So I'm just going to knit those. Um, yeah, so I can't wait. I'm going to wind these up tonight and cast on tomorrow. And so next episode, I should have some progress to show you. Yeah. But yeah, I love these. I really do. Um, I couldn't stop staring at them today when they came in. Like I kept sneaking off to my room to like go look at them and yeah. Okay. Um, so that is the August Monet Club. I also got a few other goodies in the mail. One of them is a project bag. So this is from Earl Grey Fiber Company. She's a yarn dyer, but she also makes, she also sews up project bags. And she sold, she released some in her shop, I think it was like a week or two ago, and a lot of them are Christmas themed. So this is, if you look closely, it's kind of Christmas themed. It's like mistletoe, cats wearing scarves, presents, Santa hat, cats. Um, but the color isn't like super Christmassy, so I'm just ignoring that. I'm just gonna use it all year round. Um, but what I really love is the bottom. The bottom is this like cork fabric. So it feels kind of corky, like cork, but soft. Shiny, yeah. And the inside is just kind of like a, I guess, unbleached cotton. 
I don't really know my my fabric types and it's a drawstring bag but yeah I really love it I haven't like bought a new project bag in a really long time so um felt like I was a little way overdue and yeah I really love it I can't wait I'm gonna probably put my Monet project in this one because I'm dying to use both of them all right I also got yarn from Republic of Wool. So I've known about Republic of Wool for several years now, but this is like the first time I've made a purchase from her, which is crazy to me. I don't know why, but yeah. So Republic of Wool does shop updates every Friday at, I think it's like, what time is it? 6 or 7 p.m. Pacific time? Yes? Or 5 p.m. Pacific time? I don't remember. Um, that info was all on her, her uh, website though. And so I got this a couple weeks ago. This is um, in her flossy fingering base. This is called Spiced Milk. So it's this pretty cream base and it's got speckles throughout. Get it to focus. Yeah, there's some tan spaces in here too. Yeah. So I got two skeins, pour a tea of some sort. Maybe I'll throw a contrast color in if I find one that pairs to do a color work sweater or something. Yeah, I really love it. It's a really pretty neutral um, without being like just a, you know, one tone neutral. Um, I also got my Woolberry Collective Order for the month of, month of August? Yes, month of August. So, the two colorways that um, Bethany dyed up for August, the first one is Ode to Summer. So this beautiful kind of like rose goldy color. So this kind of rose goldy color with gold throughout, some flecks of red in there. This is in the worsted, worsted base. And I got two skeins of these because my plan is to pair it with this skein of, this is Madeline Tosh. Hmm. Madeline Tosh, what base is this? I lost the label. <laughs> so that doesn't help. I have another skein of it somewhere. I just don't want to rummage in my shelves and take it out um, because all my yarn is plastic bagged to protect it from my kids. So I don't want that rustling sound to really distract you. Um, I mean, when I start to knit this up, I will tell you what the colorway is and what the base is too. But it's Malintosh fingering. It's applied fingering. It's not their TML base. What is it? Anyway, it's like, I think the colorway is Silver Fox. Um, I'm going to pair these together for a Earth and Air sweater by James Watts. So this will be the main color with this fingering as the CC in between. And then the other colorway that she dyed up for the collective was called Golden Sunset. So you can see it's this beautiful gold color. And I got it on the Tweed DK base. And I am planning to knit a, I think it's called Camp Pullover with this. So I got five skeins of this. Um, I'm just showing you two right now. Yeah, look how pretty it is. I'm really glad I got it, so I get it on the DK base too. I mean, the Tweed DK base, yeah. All right, and so the last purchase I've got to show you is from a new indie dyer. Um, this is by Shannon. Um, her shop name is Jador Fibers. And Shannon is a good friend of mine that I made on Instagram, so I was really happy to support her sharp shop and support her opening. Um, and so I got two colorways, two? Yes, two colorways from her. This first one is called Misty Mountains Cold, and this is in her DK base. You see it's a tonal blue. There's some very some depth to it as well. I feel like that's pretty good. Yeah, and this is in her DK base. 75% merino, 25% nylon. I got five skeins of this for a sweater. I think what I'm gonna make with it is, um, I have the book Ready, Set, Raglan from Pom Pom. And so I'm gonna knit one of the raglans in there. I can't remember now which one I decided on. Maybe it was Woodwardia, I don't remember. Yeah. 
feel like I'm trying to make sure the color captures correctly. That's pretty correct there. I'm really sorry, you guys. I think when I started out, it was looking pretty good and then something shifted and the coloring just like went out of whack. Yeah, anyway, I'm really sorry. But this, this does look pretty good. It just might be a little lighter than it is in real life. That's better than darker, right? I don't know. That's pretty accurate, yeah. And then the other colorway I got from her is, it's a one of a kind. And it's a one of a kind of rose gold. And this is also in DK. So let's hold up both of these here. Yeah, so you can see it's a rose goldish base with some reddish speckles in it. There we go. Some reason holding up to my face helps balance the light out better. Maybe not. I don't know. Or maybe it's just that my when my face is closer, I can see better. <laughs> and I can see that the color is showing up correctly. Yeah. So I just got two skeins of these because she only had two of them. Um, and I'm planning to make some sort of garment with it. Um, probably whole pair it with something else that I can find a stash or something. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. So um, if you haven't seen her stuff before, Jador Fibers, I will link her shop below. Go check it out um, and support her if you like her things. She's a new indie dyer. Um, she's working really hard to really bring beautiful yarn into the world and to, um, yeah. And I, I, just, I just love how she's starting out already. And I'm really excited to see where she goes. All right, I think that is all I have to share with you today. Yes. It is all okay so before i wrap up the wellness tip for this episode so my wellness tip for you this week is i'm going to share with you how to differentiate when you should use heat versus cold for when you're feeling achy or pain pains and aches and that kind of thing um because i think that's something that a lot of people don't quite know they don't know when they should use heat versus ice for when they're feeling pain or when they have an injury of some sort um so i decided i just lay it out for you and make it nice and simple so um, when, you're ha when you're feeling achy, when you have got pain, that kind of thing, um, when to use heat versus ice. So heat is something that I recommend my patients to use when either they're feeling really stiff, um, if they've got really tense and tight muscles. Um, yeah, those are the main reasons because you know heat will bring blood flow to the area. So um, if you've got an acute injury, something where like you sprained your ankle, you sprained your wrist, you fell on something, you don't want to put heat on that because that will bring more blood flow to your area and kind of inflame things more and make any swelling worse. But if it's something like you've got chronically tight shoulders, you've got chronically chronic neck pain uh, where you got pain day in and day out, uh, maybe you slept weird and you woke up with a really stiff neck, um, it's okay to put heat on that because heat will help warm up your joints, help everything move a little bit better, it'll help melt any tension that your muscles are feeling away. Heat tends to make people relax too, so if you've got really tight muscles and shoulders, putting a heating pad on will help relieve some of that stress and tension. Um, in terms of heat, the best kind of heat to use is what we call moist heat. And what I mean by that is heat where it comes from kind of like a water source. Um, and so the best way to do that at home is to either take like a hot shower, sit in a hot bath, or if you can make up like your own little heating pad out of rice. So what you can do is take like a, I don't know, like a small pillowcase, fill it with some rice, sew it up, and then um, you can stick that in the microwave and warm it up. And then the rice, um, when it heats up, it produces kind of like a moist heat. Um, and so when you put it on, it penetrates deeper because moist heat will penetrate deeper into your tissues than dry heat. And dry heat would be something like um, like those, um, those packs, those heating packs that you can just warm up that um, either are the kind where you break it and then it, the chemical heat that makes sense i'm not sure if i'm making sense but anyway moist heat is just something where there's some moisture in there because that moisture will help it penetrate deeper okay um so when to use cold um a good time to use cold is when you've got an acute injury an acute injury is anything where it's a new injury or something where you flared it up and it's been less than like three to five days okay um, so an example of that would be um, if you've been knitting a ton and you overused your wrist and you, your wrist is feeling really achy, really sore because you just knit too much the day before. 
that's a good time to use ice because usually when you're feeling that kind of pain, achy pain or stabbing sharp pain from overuse, that's because there's some inflammation going on in there from the overuse. Cold um, ice will help to bring that inflammation down. So for example, um, I mentioned that last week I had really overused my thumb when I was doing the sewn bind off with a tapestry needle. And so I iced my thumb like on and off throughout the day. So I would say when you ice and when you do heat, like put it on for no more than 15 minutes. You don't want to burn yourself and you don't want to give yourself like frostbite either, which is possible, okay? Um, so no more than 15 minutes at a time, but you can do it multiple, multiple times throughout the day. So I just put ice on myself like for five to 10 minutes and then I would take it off and like an hour or two later, I would put it back on. I stretched in between as well and just like rested my hand as much as I could, like try not to use it for much of anything. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's basically my breakdown of when to use heat versus ice. So he think heat for tight and achy muscles and ice for overuse soreness. Um, ice for when you know you did a little bit too much and heat for when it's like tension stress. Okay. Um, so anyway, I hope that's helpful. If you have any qu further questions about that, feel free to pop them down below and I will answer them. Um, yeah. So any information that you're looking for, everything is linked in the description box below. Um, thank you again for joining me, for spending time with me. Uh, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Happy knitting.